I throw the trees in the shred bin. Oh. I throw the trees in the shred bin. You threw them back? Half of our paper we shred. Oh. We you have know like what this I big use. like tote and they come once so a Sasha month. Sure well, this is the stuff I, I made in your four squares and I so use it for not picking. People like are trying to get in. Mm-hmm. You know, the back sides of stuff. That's all right. That you know. All right. Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right. Tonight it is Monday, October seventh, twenty twenty-four. We are at the um, John Hope and Boom meeting room, We're opening the town select board meeting. And if you haven't known, um, Mr. Hogan Boom passed away. Um, and so I'd like to start with a moment of silence, if we could, please. Thank you, everyone. I appreciate that. <coughs> Um, as you know, uh, there will be a memorial service for John on the 17th up on Bliss Ridge at 3 to 6, I believe. Um, and I'm sure you'll all have good stories uh, to tell. And as we've all known, John was 35 years around this table. So um, long live John. So he'd want us to, to move on. And he sure would. He sure would. <laughs> he just just been pulled in too. He's the only guy I know that can get from South Hill or where we live down here and get here exactly at six every day. Um, so general public <coughs> comment. Excuse me. I think we just have one person. And uh, so Gene, why don't you go ahead, Mr. Buffano? Hi. Take a couple minutes. My name is Gene Buffano. I'm running for House uh, Washington Two as a conservative and an independent. The reason why I'm running is, as we all know, the school taxes. Mine went up 20%. And um, we have a choice. I have a choice. My wife and I have a choice. Either we move out, like so many of my friends and people I knew when I first got here. Uh, I, I've been in the Valley for 50 years, commuted 30 of those years with my wife and kids. And then when we retired, we, we bought a house, a piece of property in Warren built it. We, my wife and I literally built the first, the basement and the first floor to save money. Uh, we subcontract to our contractor. And we just don't want to leave. We love this place. We love the valley, the people here. But I'm retired. I, economically, I can only go so far. And next year, the taxes are not going down. They're going to go up for two reasons. One, the general fund's going to have a hit, according to what I've read. Number two, they're changing the, CL, the CLA and how they manipulate that number, which I believe the CLA is, I'm not going to say illegal, but I could not find a statutory, um, full statutory authority. They can impose a CLA, but there's no, you can't, you can't go and argue. Like if you're assessed to list your property, you go down and you argue that one time there's a whole procedure. You can't, I sent the letter to the commissioner. I said, well, how do I appeal this? And we got in the letter back. There's now a bill, 480 in the House, where the state wants to take over all assessments. And uh, part of that bill is an appeals process. But it doesn't exactly say what it is. It just says we're going to create an appeals process. So I don't know how you appeal something when they just use plain old math. You know, Warren was lucky. We, People were selling houses for more than what they were worth. And that's the problem. Because our whole, they did the comps and they said, well, yeah, your house is now worth, it was worth 400, it's now worth 600. And they're taxing us on that $600. So um, I'm running as an independent because my view is we have to change the supermajority. If we didn't have a supermajority, then every one of the bills, all the climate bills, the tax bills, there would have to be negotiations between uh, the people in the House and the Senate and with the governor, or else they wouldn't pass. So having a supermajority, they overrode 12 out of 13 bills last year, and each one of them are going to cause, in my view, catastrophic harm to our economy 
in our incomes. I mean, it, beside the, the taxes, you know, we have the, the various climate action bills. They each are going to impose a significant cost. I've read the climate action bill. I've read the affordable heat bill. I didn't read the Clean Air Act, though. But I do read the bills, and coming down the pike, it's going to be very expensive. They're creating, it's going to be expensive in a number of ways. Uh, number one, your fuel provider is going to have to hire somebody to do uh, energy credits. It's like the old carbon credits that went by the wayside, but they brought it back. So they're going to be trading credits back and forth if your fuel provider doesn't meet whatever standards. And by the way, they created a, created a separate committee to manage this. It's not any legislative body, it's a separate committee. They can fire that guy and put somebody else in there. So it's, in my view, <laughs> probably unconstitutional too, but at the end of the day, it's going to cost a ton of money. I, um, so I want to be a voice of reason. I, my resume, um, I was lucky my whole life. I've done a number of things success, successfully. The Marine Corps sent me to electronic school. I have an associate's degree equivalent to electrical engineering. And I did use that throughout my career. I worked as an iron work when I got out. I worked as a computer guy. I was working uh, a regional troubleshooter because that seems to be my forte, figuring out why things aren't, why things aren't working, and coming up with solutions. Uh, I went to work for uh, Citibank. Oh, in between that, at 28, I got my mass, uh, Bachelor of Science in Business and Marketing. I used that throughout my career. So throughout, whether it's Citibank, ADP, MasterCard, IBM, I've always used a talent to figure out why these problems are and how to solve them. And it's usually pretty easy. You go to the people and you go, why is this like that? Who did this? Why are we doing this? And once you start asking why, then you can figure out how you're going to solve it. The housing crisis, the homeless crisis, well, it's almost the same thing, right? I got homeless people and I got a housing crisis. So when you look at homelessness, three categories, correct? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I look at everything in a, a very broad mind. I, I don't believe in following all the rules. I'll figure out how to solve a problem and I'll do it. If you guys have any questions for me, I, I think if I get elected, I'll be a, a good voice of reason. And, and I've appeared before the Vermont legislature four times. I was successful three times. Smart meters are voluntary now because of my efforts and two other people. Uh, the cops still have tasers. <laughs> that was another one. And I met before I was a mayor of my community real quickly. Two years where we reduced costs, improved service, modernized our police department. I wrote the cell tower law and had a, a lawyer put it into legalese and a tree ordinance. I'm not a, a tree hugger, but I didn't want the developers to come a clear cut. And, and you know, ruin the character of our village. So, so I'm amenable to working with anybody that's willing to solve a problem. And when you look at school, there's only one way to do that. And I know everybody gets upset when I say it, but we're going to have to figure out how to consolidate because the same system's not going to work. Well, very good. I, I think uh, certainly taxes are on everyone's mind, so if you have a solution there. It well, the school, very well. the school tax. But we don't need the solution now. We don't have that time. I do. But I, but you may have it. We don't have the time here. Well, it, it, I agree. In the piece I handed out, sure. I have some solutions, yeah. So okay. I, I do appreciate you coming in. You're the first candidate that has, and, and I would certainly like to hear uh, from candidates. So thank you. We yeah, appreciate that. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for listening. If anybody wants to see any of what I have to say, <laughs> no, that's fine. Thank you. Have a good Thank night. you very much. I appreciate it. All right, Carol, you are up next. Yes. So this is the public hearing adoption of interim flow hazard area bylaws. You to come right up with me, huh? um, so we adopted this, but we needed to hold a public hearing. Right. Afterwards. We had that scheduled, there wasn't a quorum, so now we're having a public hearing now. If anybody has any questions, I can go over again. This is pretty much exactly what was in that, put in place following Irene. Mm -hmm. 
and it gives me, as the zoning administrator, the ability to work directly with the floodplain manager for the area when people are doing repairs to flood damaged buildings and avoids the need to go to the DRB for every repair that takes place. I have not issued any permits under this yet. Um, Things are moving slowly with FEMA payments. People are waiting to hear about whether they're getting funds for elevations. And so there hasn't, first of all, there weren't a lot, a lot, a lot of the houses that had a lot of damage weren't in the special flood hazard area. And the few that were are kind of on hold with having all their repair work done. So okay. we're, we're moving along on that. Good. Well, it's good that we have these in place so it, just makes things expedites things for everyone. Right. Uh, gets things through the process and um, certainly are in good hands with you doing it. So you don't need to worry about things not being followed. They will be followed. Yes. Yes. So, is there anyone that has any comments on the um, adoption that we adopted? This is just the public hearing. Let's see if there's anything. No one's online. No one's online. So I guess um, public hearing is now closed. All right. Thanks, Sharon. I think yeah. Carol. Yeah. Season Carol. else. No, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at Cheryl in right. the back. All right. So now we have Craig. Hi, Craig. How are you? I'm well. Tom and you. Thank you. Craig's coming in to discuss employee insurance for the coming year. Yes. Doesn't have as good a news as he had last year. Not at all. I'm sorry to say. Sherilyn has a couple things to show you, which will aid in our discussion and review of health insurance for 2025. Oops, sorry. So you've probably heard on the news that health care in general in Vermont is out of control like a lot of other things. Unfortunately, we have the distinction of being the highest health insurance rate when it comes to the exchange plans of all states. It's just... How do we do that? Green Mountain Care Board gives away too much to hospitals. Hospitals raise their budgets. Budgets flow back to the insurance claims. They got to raise the claim dollars. Yeah. It's horrible. It's a vicious cycle. So, for the past number of years, the town of Moortown has been in a captive program through Blue Cross Blue Shield. And it has worked quite well. It's suppressed your rates below the market for Vermont Health. Connect, and it's actually provided some refunds back to the town because the the contract is set with an expected level of claims. If claims are below that, the captive shares back. If they're above that, there is no sharing, but there's no alteration in the contract. Right, we get healthy people or people that stay out of the ERs or EDs. And that's that's the the theory behind it. Mm -hmm. For 2023, there will not be a surplus release from the exchange, which means the town's employees exceeded the expected claim level. It didn't impact anything in 2024, but it does reflect the fact that claims were higher than expected, so there won't be any refund. I check year to date for 2024, the same situation is playing out again more claims than were expected. So the surplus right now, even though the year is not over and it still has, you know, two and a half more months, but the surplus is not there. So there is no expectation of any refund in 2025 for 2024. The captive does have a program that if they are below their expected as a captive, they will release funds back to uh, current members, even if the group itself exceeded its cap. So there is the potential, but the captive hasn't announced anything, that there could be some money coming back for 2023. 
one stipulation of the captive because they're with Blue Cross is the group has to maintain some coverage with Blue Cross to be entitled to a refund. So that leads me to what <coughs> Carolyn handed out. Um, you, just one quick question. Sure. The 2023 we, back, surplus back can be applied to back to 2020 in, in the next this next year if there was surplus but unfortunately there is <coughs> well there won't be from 2024 right and so the way they look at it is like right now the year 2024 they're running their portion <coughs> of the insurance paying claims doing what they're supposed to do then they have an eight and a half month run out period at the end of the policy year so when 2023 <coughs> was done they keep the books open on claims through mid-August of 2024 to capture any 23 claims that don't make it through the system by 1231. Right. So it, it, it's a timing issue, but 2023, you maxed out beyond expectation. <coughs> Unfortunately, 2024 is looking the same, same. way. Okay. Yeah. 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 So... There's two pages. One across the top shows the Blue Edge <coughs> Business CDHP one in the blue column. That's the current plan for 2024. Next to it is the renewal plan for 2025. And on the sheet I'm looking at next to it is a Vermont Health Connect Vermont Select CDHP Gold. So if we're all on that page, current rates are current rates and they will be billed through the end of December. If the town renews with BEB Blue Edge Business CDHP1, there'll be, you can see that number, should I say it out loud? A 50 plus percent rate increase which is very, very unfortunate. Well, 40, 45. Is it 45? Yeah. Okay, that's better. <laughs> Sounds better. <laughs> Sounds yeah. Good. I can't read that little number, but good yeah. for you. You got real glasses, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so the third column is showing an equivalent Blue Cross Blue Shield contract through the exchange. And not a huge amount of relief, but it would bring the renewal premium down to 25, 26%. After that line on the very bottom, the town runs an HRA, a health reimbursement arrangement. It's applied to every person covered by the plan. The spirit of the HRA is to provide dollars up to the deductible to reimburse expenses for medical, dental, and vision care that anybody might incur during the year. It's a reimbursement mechanism, so the claim has to be produced before the town spends any money. The only proper way, in my opinion, to look at an HRA is to assume 100% utilization of every dollar by every person. So at the very bottom, based on the enrollment, I'm showing the liability worst case. It could be better if people don't spend all the money that has been allocated to their reimbursement account. So in the middle column in 2025, there is a change in the deductible. Currently it's 2750, double that for a family. The contract in 2025 is gonna increase that to 3,000, double that for a family. Beyond that, the benefits will be the same. So down in the HRA column, I increase the HRA allotment to individuals or peoples with dependents to continue the 100% match based on the liability for the medical plan deductible. So that $250, basically. Yeah. Yep. 
in the Vermont Health Connect plan, which is the far right column, that has a slightly lower deductible than the BEB renewal and higher than the current BEB plan. Mm -hmm. So again, in the HRA column, I adjusted those numbers to maintain a zero out-of-pocket cost to employees for any medical-related expenses. So, in the long run, you know, it's not an easy decision, but the numbers are pretty clear that, in my opinion, continuing with BEB is probably not in the town's best interest. Considering the Blue Cross option, it would reduce the fixed cost, the premium, and it would slightly reduce the HRA. Mm -hmm. Everything with the HRA today is embedded in the Blue Cross claim process. If a change was made away from the captive, but still within Blue Cross, that whole mechanism would stay exactly the way it is today. The HRA would continue to pay claims that are incurred while the, the plan is in place. People would have their debit cards. They could pay for their dental, vision care. Everything in place today would remain exactly the same. It would just be a change in the platform. And that's, again, going to the last platform, the, the goal. Okay, you can still do that. Yep. Yep. Because it's all blue cross. blue cross. It doesn't matter. Okay. Correct. The second page in the first two columns, blue and green, identical I it, information. You know what, Sharon, can I, I think I got the same page each time. No, I thought that no. too. Oh, no, I didn't. You're this right. Yep. MVP yep. Right yep. Here. yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit I different. Got it. Yep. God, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the only difference. <laughs> I could have printed them in color. I was creative and I had the town hall on one of these pages to be able to say, look at the town hall page. But I, I ran out of time. And my glasses are sad. Can this, can this light, isn't this light usually a little brighter or not? You can't? It's Dimmer? Because of, it's because of the light. Yeah, try it. Or what? So, I don't know if I can get on the screen. Oh, if I could plug in, I could put it on the screen. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. Ah, look at that. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Sasha. <laughs> Don, thank you. Let there be light. She lost her arm on that one, but. But there's no one. So on the second handout page, again, the blue column, the middle green column, identical to what we just discussed. Mm -hmm. Current plan, 25 plan, same rates, same HRA. In the third column, I'm showing an equivalent MVP plan now. So that would be a changing carrier. Their fixed costs, this is still a Vermont Connect plan, so their fixed costs come in lower than the Blue Cross equivalent in Vermont Health Connect. Because that that dollar amount is uh, lower than, no, I'm sorry, <coughs> I misspoke. It's at the same level as the renewal with uh, BEB, 3,000, double that for 6,000. Right. Yeah. So that would filter down to <coughs> you know, a, a higher HRA allotment if the town was to still keep 100% reimbursement but there would be a premium savings, a fixed dollar hard cost savings that would reduce, you know, if you're looking at Blue Cross, Vermont Health Connect, third column on the first page, takes, you know, almost 26% down to 14 and a half. 14, yeah. yeah, or 16 if you're on the top there. 16 is probably 16 the better, better number yeah. to focus on. Yeah. 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 But that would mean a carrier change. Any right. change is always an unknown. The contracts are both HSA qualified contracts. So the benefits. HRA. Well, HRA and HSA. No worries. 
Um, the HSA piece is controlled by the IRS. So while you don't use them as an HSA, the characteristics of an HSA are set by the IRS. All expenses subject to the deductible. Once the deductible is satisfied, all expenses paid 100%. Mm -hmm. Two exceptions, preventative care, that's always paid 100%. Wellness drugs in either plan, because all HSA plans have to treat wellness drugs outside the deductible, subject to a copay or a cost share. So Blue Cross, MVP, they don't write the script on these plans. Yep. The IRS does. Okay. You happen to couple it with an HRA, which is perfectly fine. So the benefits oh. underneath the HRA in theory, wouldn't change from one carrier to the other. Mm -hmm. The differentials could be some doctors are in Blue Cross's network and they might not be in MVP or vice versa. Um, that's always something that I warn people, if there's a carrier switch, check with your current providers. Just ask them, are they part of both networks in Vermont? Typically, the answer is yes. Yes, mostly because we only have two. That's it. <laughs> That's it. And if you don't play with one, you're losing out on possibly half of the business. 50% of your income. <clears throat> so, you know, I don't want to say BEB is off the table, but I don't think the town is going to want to accept a 50 yeah, 55. 55 percent increase. That's just not reasonable with Blue Edge. With Blue Edge. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't go back in the future because they're not going to hold bad years against you. And, you know, the town in the captive standpoint is a small group. Thankfully, with five or more people, any group can approach the captive. Once you go below five, you can't. So you have six enrolled people, you're above the minimum, but being a small group, it's not uncommon that you have bad claims at any given time. And up until this time, claims were pretty good. And we saw refunds come back and you save money not paying the exchange rates, but it's kind of coming back now. We've received about $23,000. Through the whole tenure? Yeah. Yep. So that program worked yeah. when it was good claim activity. So can I say something? Please. So on the first spreadsheet that he gave you, I just want to make sure that everybody knows that prior to going to the Blue Edge, and correct me if I'm wrong, prior to going to the Blue Edge, we were in that third column under the 2025 plan where it says Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont, if the board decides they don't want to switch because of possible issues, carrier, issues. carrier issues, then we would be going up 22% uh, versus MVP at 14.5. I just wanted to point that out so that they know or know that we did, that's the plan we used to have prior. Yep. And as soon as the captive was an option, we jumped right in yeah. for the simple yeah. fact that we were it worked out. Right? You, you saved money and but now we're got money back, but now that's coming back. And the other thing is, too, is that the board needs to make a decision. It would be nice if it was made tonight because we're on a time frame trying to get everything in with Craig because it's a very short window of time. When is that? Well, we, we have, it's, it's not immediate, but if it's gonna be a carrier change, by this time in November would be good to have it locked up and done, paperwork in, everybody has a card for 2025 before January 1. If it's a platform change internal with Blue Cross, we have more time because we just need to say, take us out of the captive, put us in Blue Cross, <coughs> further is notified about any adjustments to the HRA for the next year, less time concerning. 
less time consuming. We did have problems when we changed from one to the other, and employees didn't have cards. Cards. They to the doctors, and, yeah. and that was changing the MVP or wherever. Yeah. If we were, if we were, literally November seventh of next next month, making decisions, we'd have plenty of time. Well, our next we have a meeting on the twenty first. October. Then another select board meeting. Okay. And one on the then November fourth. Then the fourth. Yeah. So. So can you I mean, come back on the fourth. Sure. Why don't we have you back on the fourth, and we can make that decision by then. We'll have maybe questions between now and then. Sure. Um, that's. That, I mean, but the fourth that, gives you and Cheryl in enough time. To if do you say, the let's go, out. you know, I would say if we had everybody's enrollment forms by Friday of that week, we'd be, we'd be fine. Or, or should we discuss it the 21st and try to shoot for the week of the 28th or something? That would certainly take pressure from timing and elections yeah, off you, the table. If we could do the 21st, because we have the general election in November, yeah. that same week, well, the fourth. it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be, be a lot. Day. Because right. we have a lot of reporting to do back to the Secretary of State's office. Will we have a select board meeting on the fourth, but with it being the election day? Only because of, I mean, I... Are you coming to work on Tuesday? Who? Am I what? Are you coming to work on the election? If you want some help, yeah. I'm Why don't about we? It right. shouldn't. I just was wondering. If between you now and the 21st, so that's a couple of weeks for us to try to do our homework on. Yeah. We have yeah. questions. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think, right? Cal, you with that? You with I'm that? fine with that, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. So, so 10 not, 21 then. 10 21, yes. Yeah. yeah, and then we can always reach out to you if you really have a question in sure. the next two weeks. Or Absolutely. Something. Yeah. That's yep. fine. Okay. Okay. Any immediate questions at the moment? No, not really. Not here. I don't know if Kelly, you have anything? Mm -hmm. No. Don? No. That's pretty straightforward. Uh, that's good. Yeah, I mean, it, everything's there. It's there. The numbers are the numbers. I mean, just the numbers, right? I mean, it's. Well, what was the Charlotte, What was your point, Charlotte, about the twenty percent from the last thing you were just saying? So. Prior to being on Blue Edge, our current yeah. plan, this is the plan that we had prior. Yeah. Was the gold. CDP gold? Yep, on yeah. the third column. Right, yeah. okay. And that is going up 22% right. Right. compared to our current plan. Yeah. This is the MVP plan, which would mean changing providers. Yeah, that's we're going to say 15%. Correct. Yeah. So I just wanted to point out yeah. that you guys would know that this plan here in Blue Cross is the one that we had prior to right. Blue Edge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I would say better to focus on that first <coughs> that twenty five or exactly. Twenty five percent that, that is twenty six. That is a real number. And then there's the and sixteen the twenty two. The the right. numbers down below are really dependent on utilization. And okay. if somebody doesn't spend that HRA money. Okay, right. We've never spent it. We haven't spent it. So it's there for like your worst case for budget, but it's truly not a good indicator. So it's ultimately it's 25 or 15. We go 15. We get to switch carriers. 10 percent. I'll get new cards. And 10 percent is, is, is the yeah. question. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yep. And really. Just so you all aware, like Craig was saying in the okay. bottom column, we have never used all our HRA. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's true. Okay. Yeah. But I will say it's got to be a very appreciated benefit for somebody to just yeah. get their glasses, not have to pay their deductibles or their out of pockets. It's, no, it, I think it's great. It's a generous plan yeah. design. Yeah. From yeah, no. This is less disruption for everybody. That is. totally Certainly is. For 10%. Yeah. yeah. That's very much true. Okay. 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 <clears throat> but I hate to say it, that. These are your only options. No, no, that, there's no. no other carriers, no other way, which is part of our problem in Vermont. We have no private market right. other than the captive. When that works, it's great. And when it doesn't, you Thank fall back. Dean for that one, right? Mm -hmm. Shumlin. 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 Yeah, that's his legacy. His legacy was that and uh, a lot of JP. <laughs> Someone should have gone to jail. Yeah. <laughs> All right.
So thank you, Craig. We appreciate you coming in. Thank you for your time. We'll see you yeah, well, thank you. Oh, yeah. All right. Now we have um, yeah. sure. Cheryl and Ray. Ray and Cheryl with Thank you. Oh, hopefully it's great news. They send us more money than they even ask. <laughs> yeah. uh, they have no money. <laughs> and we got it all yesterday. Oh, hey, I heard they gave it all to the migrants. <laughs> yeah, Fox News. Can't get away from Fox. Uh, I guess first is the uh, FEMA update. <clears throat> so um, we keep on. I keep on saying this, but I think we're inching our way towards getting a check to, for seven hundred twenty-two thousand dollars. I'm sure we're going to see it this year. They what do you no think? Let me put that. They have no money. And this is for twenty twenty-three. <laughs> this is for twenty twenty-three. Right. <clears throat> so uh, we're really hoping to see that. What are they? I mean, they just uh, are saying it's the check is in the mail. I don't know. I'm not sure. Which um, <laughs> no, they aren't saying the check's in the mail. They're saying as soon as Congress gives them the money, they'll send the check. Right. So we are at the check is in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Homeland Security that, that funds FEMA. So we're yes. just waiting yeah, on that. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Should come soon. Um, and then the check doesn't come from them. It comes from the state. Right. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's they give the state. Hey. Um, I am uh, meeting with FEMA every couple weeks to review uh, last year's work and this year's work. Uh, we have like a kickoff meeting on Thursday for this year's work. <laughs> uh, but first, uh, getting back to last year's work. So that's the funding part. Um, we're still uh, getting ready to do the culverts on Wardbrook Road. Uh, the, right now, it is scheduled to, the first culvert will be installed the, the week of the 28th. Is that the one that Avery's doing? Yes. Okay. Um, and this is 2023 work? Yes. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So that culvert, the first culvert, which is where the tube pipes are, uh, will be installed. Um, that week or two weeks, uh, the second culvert, which is uh, 100 yards, a couple of yards below it, will be installed in November. Uh, but we've got clearance That's from. That's the one you got to go around with Steve. Yeah, so the whole Hog Hall, Hall, Hall Road uh, detour is not going to work. It's just too much work there. Right. Uh, so we've worked it out on Avery. They're going to install part as much of the culvert as they can and put the detour. Uh, on, on, the on the road itself. So, yeah. detour, culvert installation, move the road back over, finish the culvert installation. Well, I think we'll get all the culvert in. It's the head walls that are going to be a problem. Right. Mm. That's why the road has to be detoured. So, uh, I've gone over this with Joanne. I was just going to say that's uh, And Well, I say I've gone over it. I've left a message on her phone. That's good. Okay, and uh, I will try to see her. I've met with her a couple times since the last meeting. I've gone over trees, what we're doing, um, and such like that. Perfect. Uh, I, think, I think we're good. Um, so that's that culvert. Um, the other culvert uh, on Joan Brook, my Callie's house, I believe will be out to bid this month for construction next year. Um, that's a pretty good sized culvert. It's uh, like a 26 foot span, eight by 26. Uh, I believe their estimate is around a million dollars for that. Really? Yeah. And this is the 2024 item. Yes. This, the, this is the 2023. 2023, 2023, 2023 yeah. That's a 2023 well, job, right. 25 completion. Yeah. And uh, so we expect to have that out for bed. So we can, you know, get, get, it, uh, get it in next year. Uh, and then there's a Lover's Lane project, mm. which is still, uh, that's been the biggest, hardest one because uh, um, trying to find the right solution for that. Great. It's been, been difficult, but I hope uh, this by Thursday this week we'll have a price on that. But I, I'm sure that's a, a million dollar job. They have just thought about just redoing the bridge. I just, just was going to ask this. Well, that's one of the things we've talked about is uh, <clears throat> as a mitigation effort, Tom, is to, okay, instead of fixing the road, 
how much is it going to cost to just put a new bridge in yeah. and just shut down that road? And we're trying to get that cost together, as well as moving the whole road over one lane. Yeah, right. Uh, this is some ledges of blast there and stuff too. Right. It would be a little, but not as much as you think. Right, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's been the issue. Yeah. Is the yeah. ledge is not there. Yeah. How much ledge to do? We're trying to find the best solution. Yeah, I uh, bet. That's not right. an easy yeah. one. It's a cost of You know, so we're carrying about $850,000 estimate now. If we didn't do anything and just try to fix the slope without any fancy mitigation work, it'd be about 800000 So I, I don't know exactly what the number's going to be. Yeah. Those are the three main uh, things going on for that. Um, uh, so, part of the money that we'll be getting, uh, the seven hundred twenty-two thousand, includes some mitigation work, which we haven't done on some of the roads. Mm -hmm. uh, what? Some mitigation work on some other roads. roads. On other yeah. roads. Yeah. So they they give us money to repair the roads to. Uh, Previous condition and then to upgrade and then some of the to upgrade and all that well, stuff. So, right, yeah. uh, you know, if it all comes together, you know, you know, that's seven hundred twenty-two thousand. That's what we'll get. That includes the. That's what the seventy uh, twenty-five percent. Uh, they're paying seventy-five percent of the bill, right? So, yeah, seven hundred twenty-two thousand is seventy-five percent of the of the total cost. And then when we get something from the state. The other 20 yeah i think the state some other well you know the way the state's been going they've been kind of backing off on right. things they've said in the past uh, they yeah, have really. said i think that they would contribute another 12 percent but it, whether that's still true or not i don't know there's a percentage and it depends on the job yeah. It can go from, from 9, 10, 11, 12. It yeah. depends on where. But there is something that. out there. There is something there else, is. you know. But the bottom line is, I think, you know, the town is still going to be in it for about 10% of whatever the total cost is. Okay. Or more. So that's where we stand on, I think, the work for last year. All right. Um, so I've been busy the last couple of weeks. Uh, work with Martin because there was a, a lot of roads that we can't, the road crew doesn't have time to finish. And we put a lot of jobs, four jobs out for bid. And that's why I, I want to, I'm here to discuss tonight. Was yeah. And that's what I'm looking at here for these bids so that in case people are wondering what I'm doing on yeah. my phone. But uh, before we discuss the bids, I just want to make it, I want to be really upfront that uh, um, some of the contractors, particularly Avery, independent from Moortown, I have worked for him and I have hired him to work for me separately. But I think I've, I've gone, I've really tried, I've made that effort to treat every contractor that has put a job out for Moortown as an equal. Uh, and I've not let any other relationship uh, be part of this bid process. And I made it pretty clear to all the contractors. Uh, well, I so, certainly have no questions sure. about, uh, and you have high integrity. Yeah. And I just want to be quite, quite upfront because uh, there is a problem with it. some of the, the first bids we put out. The Avery, I believe, made some honest mistakes on the bids. That, if you read my recommendation, I believe we should overlook them and accept these bids uh, because they are lower bids, and. Um, that's where we stand on that. So uh, why don't we get into that a little bit. The, the first bid uh, was more town common. Or I guess the first bid was Bradley Road. Let's start with Bradley Road. Um, do any of you have the email? I forwarded it. Yeah. OK. So. Um, yeah, I'm going to look at it on I can I can just review it real quick with you. Uh, when Avery submitted his bid, there were three irregularities in the bid. His, his total bid was seventeen thousand three seventy-seven. All right. Taking into account the irregularities and, and putting them back in the bid, his bid price did not change on that project, uh, and his price was still uh, forty-six hundred dollars, almost forty-seven hundred dollars below the second bid, which was uh, Hallstrom. So, um, in our 
bid documents and our town policy says we can accept or reject any any bid that's in our best interest of the town. So um, it is with that in mind that I believe that we should accept Avery's bid for Bradley Road of 17377 And what does that entail? The Bradley oh. Road project was a um, stone ditching okay. for the most part. What were the other bids, right? The other bids were uh, Hallstrom was twenty two thousand sixty five, uh, Blue Mountain was forty nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, and J A McDonald was sixty three thousand nine hundred. Some tabs if you want to cut. What? If you guys want to look at the tabs for all the jobs, if you, um, Carolyn has them all here. Yeah, this is this is Bradley Road. Yeah, because I, I can't find everyone, but I can't find Bradley Road. Yeah, I can't find Bradley Road. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Those are one Bradley Road. Those are those are mine for you to look at. Those are all the bids yeah. for Bradley Road. Does anybody want to go on with that one? Yeah. Oh, there's four here. Oh. Yeah. Sure. Now probably never got come up. So if you uh, if you look at Avery's bid, you, want to go? Uh, you can see where the problem is. Tom, it's okay. Here. Okay. And you went right here. Tom, it's three. Well, you only have one. Okay. Okay. Right. Right. Here we go. Bottom line is though, this here, number here Avery's doesn't bed. change when he does the math. So these, uh, this one, uh, this one thousand should have been here. This was left blank. But the the bottom line is this: when you add this column up, it still comes up to this. So the seventeen three seventy seven, uh, that's our bottom line. So yeah, I guess it really doesn't matter how you get there, does it? it well, it does in a sense that we're paying by the unit, right? But for the once that the mistakes are made on, they're lump sum. So there won't be any other unit. So okay. like the 50 cubic yard, look at that item number one, for instance, mm -hmm. those 50 cubic yeah. yards are 92 a yard. Yep. If that's 40 cubic yards, then it, it that's what it's paid for. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas yeah. the blocks is the blocks. He's gonna get paid a thousand dollars for the blocks. For the blocks. And regardless of. Oh, he should have had them in the other call. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, yeah, that's yeah, that's the difference. Um, I, I believe it's a minor uh, mistake. I, I do believe that it was an honest mistake, and I, I, I think it's in the best interest of town to go for it, but you know, it's not my call. Yeah, he just filled it in wrong, that's all. He figured it was a lump sum number over there. Yeah, and he I didn't put it in the unit price spot. Yeah, no, if it was a unit price, and like you said, there was different units, different different thing, I think. But no, I, I would move to accept this bid um, for uh, 17377 from Avery. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, vote aye. 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 So can we, we can do that, the four of us, the four people vote on something? Yeah. No, I hope three people. <laughs> yeah, majority. Yeah. All you need is. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I just didn't know what the. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So uh, what I'm going to do is, uh, with all the projects, if you approve them all, is I'll try to get contracts out. I'd like to be able to like email them to Tom or somebody right. so you can just sign off. Yep. Or we won't have to wait. No, that's good. Okay. So that takes care of Bradley Road. Okay. This one. Okay. okay, so more town common road. We have we have the same issues, only it's a larger project. Um, the bids for the common road was Avery was uh, seventy-seven thousand three twenty-four. 
Hallstrom was 91,770. Blue Mountain was 141, 8925, and McDonald was 115,900. And so there was uh, four mistakes on Mabry's bed on that road. Um, and again, they were in the unit uh, price column. Um, the excavator rental, he made a math mistake, which actually increased his bid uh, from what he had originally had written down. And he, yeah, he made a math error on two of them. The left out the unit price on one. On, on, on two other ones. So his bid price was on this form is 71914 You adjust his bid based on the unit price, his bid price comes out to 77324 okay. That price still makes him lower than the second bidder. Not the 75 yeah, this is the figure right here, where it should be. It should be 77? 75. 75. Ray, you said 77. You said 77. 77,324. Yeah, Mike, you want to see what Charlie has there? That's the one we worked on the other day. Yeah, he only corrected uh, one of them. He should correct this one's off, too. Okay. This one's off by fourteen fifty-two. That's why I put the spreadsheet together. There was two mistakes. I see that one again. Mm -hmm. So, even with the, the mistakes, he still. 20% or 19% below Hallstrom, uh, $14,445 below Hallstrom's price for that project. And this is to be done this fall? Yes. So will he be, I mean, be able, now he'll have two projects. Can he handle the two of them? Or? Yes. So who discovered this mistake here? I mean, how did that come up in anyway? When I went through the bid bid tabs, I always uh, check everybody's math. And so that, that's where I came up with that. That's why I put the spreadsheet together. Sure. Pardon me? If you guys have any questions, feel free to. Okay. That'll be Evan Fulton. Evan, Evan Fulton. Evan was the second bidder on both projects. Do you have any questions at all, Evan? The only thing that, you know, for concerns? I've been bidding, you know, street work and this style work is, um, you know, obviously, financially, the town that's smart to go with no bid, right? But, um, as far as I've experienced with um, state state and municipality work, is is usually if there's a mistake like that, I you know I make mistakes myself too. Um, we're only human, right? And uh, I've gotten bids tossed out because you know on half million dollar work um, where I had missed a unit price and um, they they've tossed it out. Um, you know where where any work. Like that has been, you know, I guess I triple check my work before I submit it just to make sure that that price that I'm giving is going to cover everything. Um, and so that's just, that's m my experience, I guess. I appreciate that. Thank yeah. Because I yeah it's about what fifteen sixteen thousand dollars difference. Yes. Um, 
percentage wise, it's, it's kind of significant. But we have other work. I mean, there were calls. There's two more, two more bids. Right, but we, and those were awarded to. Uh, Hobson is a little bitter on one of the other jobs that we bid, and we've done a little bit on the yeah, uh, We got Cobb Hill and we got Hog Hog. So we got 92.5 on the Cobb Hill Road, right? With Halston. Cobb Hill, McDonald's was a little better at 70,000. Okay. I do have something to add on Cobb Hill. Yeah. Um, as far as Cobb Hill goes, that was a pretty extensive amount of trigger removal um, with a high risk. Um, you know, and we really had to, it's a, it's a methodical, like, to be honest with you, I wouldn't even have been it if I didn't go look at it. You know, if I laid eyes on that, I would have, you know, without looking at it, I wouldn't have felt comfortable without bidding pretty much everything that I bid. Um, and my only concern is, and, and you know, obviously McDonald is low bid, um, and I think that, you know, that's your guys' decision. Um, but without looking at that, my only concern to, to express to you guys um, and, and ladies that um, there is, like, would there be extras on that because they didn't, they weren't at the pre-bid meeting um, that Ray had held with uh, Martin. Um, I forget what day it was. It was Friday, wasn't it? Friday or Monday? It's one of those. But last last week was last last week was the pre-bid, and it was supposed to bid Friday. Am I right, Ray? And then you extended it to Monday. Yes. Um, in the people that were there, there was a gentleman out of Bershier, um, myself, and Blue Mountain Trucking. I believe that's the three people that were there. Yeah. So it was it was a non-mandatory pre-bid meeting. And the reason I made it non-mandatory is because there are so many contractors that are busy this year to try to get them all together even bid on the job is is pretty difficult. So um, and so to his point, well it's something like the trees now all of a sudden he gets there. Uh, is this contract at seventy thousand one hundred dollars is that uh, no extras on that that we're gonna be seeing on that type of stuff? The old, I mean the tree work was a lump sum item. So there'll be no changes to that. The other items uh, the unit price items, the stonework, uh, everybody knows that it's by the truck measure. It's going to be, that's how we're going to pay them. Yeah. So there's not going to be, uh, there won't be any change. I don't anticipate a change order. Uh, I, I do believe that uh, Evan is correct. I think that the price of 5000 is is probably lower than I would have bid, but understand that J.M. McDonald is a large company and and uh, I think that they have bid a lot of work and <coughs> everybody bids jobs differently. Right. Yep. I mean Waters who wasn't there they were both they were thirty five hundred dollars. Uh, yeah. They weren't at the pre-bid I understand that. Um, Does J.M. McDonald have the the time to do this in November or whatever the you know, I have not right. talked to Jane McDonald today, but they, uh, the bid documents had a completion date on November 1st, didn't they? I do have one more question. Uh, Ray, what was the estimated cost on that that you had worked out? I don't have that with me. I didn't write it down early, early when we talked about that and what you had worked out. It was over uh, McDonald's price. I think, it, I, think it, I think what you said was like around 105, 106. That's probably correct. It was over, I, I think somewhere 115. Um, but again, uh, there are some of the jobs that I have priced that have been under. 
All right, well, let's get back to Fred. I'm sorry, I, I kind of got diverted. I just wanted to see where we <coughs> here. So the first one, uh, the Moortown Common, I don't have any problem with um, this bit here. This is, uh, Ray, can I see the total right here? Moortown Common? Yeah. It's at the same thing. email on the tab right on that page. Uh, Chad moved to accept the Avery excavation bid of 71914 on the Common Road Ditching Project. 77324. 77324. 77, yeah. 77, yeah. Pardon me. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Robin. Is there a second at all? Which one did you just say? It's in front of him. The Mortel Common. Yes. This one here. Mm -hmm. That's a good, you need a second I do. Yes. Um, I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? <coughs> this one? Yeah. All in favor, vote aye. 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 <coughs> Don, did you vote? Aye. Aye. Did you vote? Mm -hmm. Yes, she did. Good. Okay, so uh, going back to, to the where are we at? Um, Hog Hollow. That was bid today, and Hallstrom was at thirty-seven thousand three forty-five seventy-five. Uh, McDonald was at. Fifty-four thousand seven forty. Uh, Blue Mountain was at sixty thousand uh, fifty-eight, and Waters was at sixty-eight thousand one seventy. So I uh, went through all the bids. And there's no irregularities in this bid, in anybody's bid. So I am recommending that you go with Hostrom, um, who is forty-six percent below McDonald. Are you comfortable with your bid? Yeah. You good with that? Yeah. Yep. Okay. All right, I move to accept Hallstrom's bill of 30, bid of 37345 and 75 cents. Second. On the hollow, Hog Hollow Road. Hog second. Hollow River Road. Road. Oh, pardon me. Thank you. And mm -hmm. River Road. Slow prepare prepared bid. I'll second that. Thank you. All in favor, would I? Aye. 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 And then Cobb Hill. We had again. This is a bit today. We had four bidders: Jay McDonald, seventy thousand one hundred; Halstrom, ninety-two thousand five hundred; Waters, hundred five thousand three. I'm sorry, hundred three thousand three hundred; and Blue Mountain, hundred sixty-two thousand three sixty-five. So again, I went through the through the math. And, uh, no irregularities in anybody's bid. So I am recommending that we go with McDonald's price. Which is 32% below all the trumps. As you can see, there's you know there's some. How do you Yeah, I mean, look at Blue Mountain. They're you know 162,000. Yeah. Oh, Sometimes. And yeah. an example, I just we just did a job in uh, Bethel um, for the town um, on it goes Rochester. I, I call it Rochester Mountain, but it goes over connects Bethel and Rochester. Um, and it's called Camp Brook Road, and um, they had you know we were middle bidder uh, on that project, and the reason was was because when they did when they looked at both bids in the timeline that they could get it done in, um, which we obviously don't know what Jay McDonald's timeline is on that, um, was they went with me because a high bid was 27% over what I was and low bid was, uh, you know, a fraction of that. And then when they went and asked low bid, 
he had missed one whole patch paving section on that road. So that, that's something to consider as well. Certainly if someone, if you, uh, we accept McDonald's and they come back and tell me they've mis mixed, uh, missed uh, paving, it's going to be too bad <laughs> right. at this point. Yeah. Um, Same with the trees. In this yeah, we, yeah, so there is no, there is no bid bond for any of these jobs. There's no bonding. Right. Right, so uh, before anybody, either any of the contractors, I guess, could back out and say, look, we just looked at them and realized we're going to take whatever. That's still a possibility, but I would doubt that's going to happen. But, uh, so, um, and Adam, you, and you have capacity to do this job this year? Yeah, yes, sir. And Ray, you're not sure on McDonald? I I did not talk to McDonald because like uh, like the bid open was just today, and uh, well, why don't we do this then? Why don't we? Um, do you think of what was discussed here at the board? Um, if McDonald can do it, do we relook at this so we get it done this year? Does that seem right to you? What do you think, Brian? Uh, yeah, McDonald uh, has to get it done this year. You know, if, they would, if we present with a contract, Brian says, I can't get it done this year, then. Uh, not a contract. Then we right. have yeah, to, you said we, the contract we, itself we has the a completion date. To, yeah, so. to uh, not go in the contract with them and award it to somebody else. But I think at this point. Um, so. so expedite things, do you think maybe we should accept his bid as the lowest and first bid? Yes. Should he not be able to accomplish this this year, take the second bid? I think that's a fair fair approach. That'd be all right? And, and my timeline on these jobs would be, as we talked at the pre-bid meeting, obviously Hog Hollow and River Road is for plowing needs. Um, are pretty substantial because that blacktop that had just gotten laid down would be, you know, at jeopardy with guardrails and it's just, it's borderline yep. not safe. Um, so complete that job and then as soon as we can get that job done, move over to Cobb Hill if we were awarded. That would be the timeline of. of that All right, thing. so I, I move to accept uh, the Cobb Hill getting discussion again. The Cobb Hill, uh, Town Highway Number Six, Cobb Hill Road, uh, bid from Jay McDonald at seventy thousand one hundred, in the stipulation that it is completed as the contract states this year. Uh, should they not be able to affirm to Ray uh, that they're going to do that, uh, Halstrom at the second uh, bidder at ninety two five uh, will be awarded the bid. Again, to be completed within the issue. Is there a second? A second that. Thank you, Robin. Any further discussion? My, <clears throat> my discussion would be, wouldn't that be the same case with the um, the road with the, what was that, Moortown Common with the trees? And which road was that? Was all the, Cobb Hill. Cobb Hill. Cobb Hill, right. That's what we're talking about. That's, That's what we're talking about. No, no, the uh, Hog Hall Road. That's Hall just Hall. a ditching job anyway, so. Evans already said he can do hog no, he's already right. Yeah. Are you talking no, about I Cobb thought there was a second Jane. We were given a second job to Jane. No, we gave two to Avery. Two to Avery, one to Hog. It was Avery and Avery. Yeah. 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 Right. So yeah. those are relatively similar. <coughs> Donald, they have seen this bid tap. Yep. Okay. We sent this bid tap to them right after the bids. Okay. So they're aware of what their prices are. Okay. They did not call me and say, Oh my God! No, right. we're good on good on yeah. that. So I just want to make sure everybody has seen these bid tabs. All the bidders have, so they all know where they stand. So I'm pretty confident this is going to go forward. All right. Well, I'll call the vote then. All in favor, vote aye. 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 All right. Very good. Okay. Uh, I think um, that does it, right? Just another quick update. Uh, is there's one more job to be bid, and that's going to be uh, the root, old Route 100 slope repair, and. Um, that will be, I'm going to have the bid in two weeks from today. 
I'm going to get it out to bid this week and have the contractors look at it. Uh, we just got our permit today to do the work, so. Old Rubble Hundred when you turn on going. Yeah, to... right across from yeah. uh, Hen Hendrickson's, just below that. Oh, right down there. Yeah. yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you for coming. Avery, thank you. Ray, thank you very much. Thank you for keeping this train going. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah, a lot, there's a lot going on. And, uh, you know, appreciate okay, everybody getting okay. yeah, after it. Okay. So we're backing up. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Everybody. Ray, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. What's that? No, unless you want to. Thanks for uh, helping. Uh, thank, thank you, Evan. I appreciate yeah. it. Yes, thank you for all your work. I know you've done a lot for us. All right, so we are um, going into executive session. Do we have a quick call before we do that? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, we'll actually, it's good. We'll go into yeah, it. Yeah. We won't start anything until you get here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to, uh, I'd move. I'm going to need three people to say yes. Um, no, I'm not leaving you. Okay. Uh, move to go into executive session with um, employee, um, the appointment of employer evaluation of public. It's number three. Number three. Yeah. Second. Thank you. All in favor, would I? Aye. Thank you. Martin. Oh, yeah.